In this video, I'm going to show you how you can recreate this snowy owl painting using acrylic paints. I hope you enjoy it and follow on my YouTube channel for more videos in the future. To start out, I'm going to sketch the general shape of the owl in my painting just so I know the proportions and make sure everything's in the right place before I put some paint down. I'm drawing a circle for the head and for the body I'm going to create this football shape. I'm going to do two curved lines that are curved outward and they come together at the end like a point for the tail. I like to make sure that the head looks like it's overlapping the body slightly so when I connect it to the head it's slightly up on the sides of the head rather than right in the middle at the bottom of the circle. Now I'm creating a small triangle that's pointing downward for the beak and it's off centered so that my owl will look like it's looking to the side rather than straight on. And then above that I am creating this letter V shape that curves out towards the sides of the circle closer to the top of the circle or the top of the forehead of the owl. There's going to be two circular like shapes for where the eye areas will be. And then I am scribbling with my pencil, sort of like zigzagging up and down to create a feathery line where the head will meet the body. When I go to create the eye, it's going to be a very similar shape to the body. It's that football-like shape. I can also describe it like it's a frowny face shaped line and then a smiley face shaped line underneath it to create this almond football shape. And then I'm going to do another half circle or a smiley face shape in the inside for the pupil and I just shaded that in. To finish my sketch, I'm going to just draw a line where the wing is going to go. You'll see me do these zigzagging motions with my pencil to help me separate some layers of feathers that I'll follow later when I'm painting. And then I just do a little bit of adjusting to make sure that everything is connecting the right way. If the body doesn't look plump enough or the shoulder at the back wasn't round enough, I just adjust it. Okay, so now let's paint. So I'm using a filbert brush and that brush was curved, a detail brush and a small and large square shaped paint brush. The first thing I'm going to paint is the background and I just like to use this technique where I put down a layer of white paint and while it's still very, very wet, I will apply a very small amount of my color, which is going to be black. So I start off with a layer of white, take a very, very small amount of black and then smear that black paint into the white paint and it will mix together on my canvas to create gray. Rather than mixing the gray beforehand, I like to do it this way so that I get more variation in the color so it won't be just a flat shade of gray. It's going to have little bits of lighter gray, little bits of darker gray, and it's going to have more texture and just more variation of the color. So I'm gonna do this to my entire background. By the way, I'm using the biggest brush that I chose to make this background happen. I find a large brush helps you blend your paint just a little bit better in a large area. All right, so now I want to make it look like there are some branches or some trees in the background that are definitely not the main focus, but I didn't want to have a very plain gray background like that. So I'm using my medium sort of sized square shaped paintbrush. I mixed up a shade of gray and then I always scrape off the excess before I get started so that it's not too goopy. And I'm just sort of wisping in a bunch of lines. They travel from the edge of the canvas into the picture and my background is still very wet while I do this. So as I add these in and I sort of brush over them a few times without adding any more paint, 
they will blend into that wet background and they will look a little bit softer. So the key here is to do this on top of a very wet background. As I glide the brush across the canvas, I'm pressing very lightly so that my lines aren't too thick. But if you want thicker lines, you can press the brush down slightly harder. And if you want thin lines, you can press the brush down very lightly. The nice thing about doing this on a wet background as well is if you end up not really liking your first attempt, you can take that large brush and maybe a little bit more white paint and sort of smear everything back in to start at the background layer once again and then give these branches a second try. So now I'm going to start working on the first layer of paint that's going to go on this owl. And this is just a base layer that I like to do to sort of figure out where the shadows are before I worry about adding the texture of the feathers. I'm going to use that darker gray that I made for the trees in the background and white. And I'm using my square shaped brush here. So what I do is I apply some of the darker gray right where I want the shadow to be the darkest. And then I use a little bit of white right on that dirty gray brush. And I start at my shadow and even actually a little bit over top of it. And by starting at the shadow with the white on the brush, the gray and the white are going to mix together. And the more white that I just continually add, the lighter and lighter it will become. So the gray stays the darkest at the shadow. And then as I add more white working further and further away from that shadow, the gray will become lighter and lighter. I ended up mixing sort of a lighter gray color to use too, because I don't want this layer to be too white. I'm going to layer on white feathers later. So I need the base of the owl to be a little bit darker so that my white feathers will stand off of it later on. So I'm just trying to avoid having too many perfectly white spots on this layer. As I'm painting this layer as well, I just like to make sure that I'm following the shape of the body. So rather than brushing on an angle or going left to right, I'm always following the curve of the belly or the curve of the wing or I'm going to paint upwards on the forehead or downwards under the eye. So I'm always choosing a direction to paint in that follows the shape of whatever body part on this owl I'm trying to paint. Those zigzaggy pencil lines that I had added on the wing, now I'm using that dark gray to follow them. So I'm using my square shaped brush and I'm sort of tracing over those zigzagged scribbly lines with that gray. And then I'm using the white to kind of go around and in between them on that dirty gray paintbrush. So there's the base layer for the body. It's not white really anywhere. It's all some sort of shade of gray, which will help my feathers stand out later. 
And to tackle the face, I'm going to do the same technique where I use the gray color to figure out where the darker places are going to be. But I just like to make sure that I'm always following the right shapes as I go around the face. So in the center of the face, right smack dab in the middle of that circle, um, usually everything kind of goes outward from the center. So as I paint underneath the beak, I'll be painting more vertical up and down. Um, but as I'm painting toward the side of the face, my brush is going to be angled slightly more outward. Now because my owl's face is turned to the side, I want to make sure that that right side of the face is a little bit darker because it will be in shadow. So I'm applying a really, really dark gray along the right side of the nose, and then I'm using some white to make sure that it gets blended out like I have done with the rest of the base layer. And then to finish off, I'm going to paint the beak black using a very small detail brush. And then I'm also going to go around the lines that I created for the eye with black as well. So I'm going to trace over the frowny face line at the top of the eye, the smiley face line underneath the eye, and then also going to fill in the half circle that I painted on the inside for the pupil. And it's going to leave a small empty space for the iris of the eye or like the colored part of the eye, which I'm going to mix up a little bit of a brown color and just fill that in to complete the base layer for the eye.
I made the line a little bit too thick. So I just used my detail brush to fix that up. I'm using a little bit of white and just doing a few small touch-ups on this first layer around the face. So here's the brown for the eye. I mixed together some brown and some yellow and some black until I was happy with the color. I didn't want it to be too bright because the eye is kind of dark. So I went with like sort of a dark brown. I think a really cool color for this owl's eye could have also been like a dark blue. I think that would have been really cool too. But I just kind of made this smiley face shape with one brush stroke and just filled in the empty space um, for the iris of the eye. I ended up making it slightly lighter and I traced over just the front part or the right hand side of that brown smiley face shape that I filled in just to give it a little bit of a highlight. All right, so now comes feathers. So I'm using that Filbert brush or the one that's slightly curved on the end. And I like to use this brush in an upward painting motion. Um, so I coat both sides with my paint. In this case, I'm using white. And then I will lay it sort of flat against the canvas um, with my hand above it on top. And I'm gonna do these little flicks with the brush going upward on the wing. So I start at the base of the feathers and I work my way up using sort of this dashing motion. I try really hard not to fiddle with these too much. If I fiddle with them too much it sort of kind of wrecks the illusion that's being created by the dashes. If you find that your first layer of feathers you're not really into, you can always repaint the wing with the shadows on the first base layer and then try it again when it's dry. So I'm going to use this sort of technique to do all of my feathers. I'm using that filbert brush, the one that's sort of rounded on the end. And then I'm going to do these upward dashing motions with it to create a feathery texture. So now that that's through, I've mixed up this lighter brown color and I'm using the same motion with the same brush, but I'm keeping my brush strokes really, really small as I pull the brush upward or do a small dashing motion upward. And I'm just sprinkling them all over the feathers. I'm not really following them too, too closely, but I do work from usually the bottom of the owl upward toward the head. Now I've mixed up a darker brown. I used black and brown and mixed them together. And I'm just going to repeat this process again, adding a second round of these very small dashes uh, with that filbert brush. And you don't have to follow the other brown ones. You can add them together, you can add them separate, um, but I definitely don't try to always match them up with the other brown colors so that it doesn't look too planned out. I want it to look pretty natural.
So when it comes to the head, I'm using the same filbert brush and I'm still making very small, small, small little dashes with those brown colors. But instead of going upward, I'm sort of going downward toward the nose. And these only exist on the top of its head. If you ever add too many of the brown markings, you can always wait for them to dry and then apply maybe some new white ones or gray ones over top. Right here, I'm using a detail sized brush and I'm just doing very small dashes with it as well. Um, just using white this time. So I'm going to be using this detail sized brush to be doing um, lots of very small dashes to create these very thin, fine looking feathers. So I'm using some grays sometimes where I want the shadows to be built up and then I'll use white for where I want the highlights to be built up more. But I'm just using a very small dashing motion and I'm following the direction of the brush strokes that I laid down before. So these owls have sort of a very fluffy nose. So over the nose area, using some gray colors and some white colors, I'm going to do some more of these dashes um, or like hair-like strokes, but I'm going to have them kind of going in all different directions around the nose area so that the nose looks very fluffy. So now I'm going to work on the branch that this owl is sitting on. So I mixed up a dark brown using brown and black. I'm using my square shaped brush and I just make sure that the brush is angled in the direction I want to paint the branch so that I get the thinnest line with a square brush that I can. Sometimes if you're maybe a little bit nervous to make thin lines with a brush, it's always good to just take a scrap piece of paper, practice making some marks with that brush until you're pretty confident in the different ways that you can draw lines with it or the different ways that you can create markings with it. Um, but the branch, it sort of grows up from the bottom, scoops underneath the owl up its side, and then I added a few other branches coming off of it. And I like to think of branches like the letter Y. Every time I add a branch coming off of a branch, it almost makes it look like I've created this funky letter Y shape. So trees are made of Ys and I hope that's helpful for you when you're creating them. I try to make my lines on my branches not straight. Um, the less straight you can make them, the more natural a branch will look.
So I'm just making some green here with some blue and some yellow to create my leaves. And I like to create my leaves in one brush stroke. So what I do is I start very lightly and then I push down a little bit harder as I approach the branch. So my brush is angled toward the branch. I start off very, very gently and as I drag the brush toward the branch, I press down slightly harder. If this technique um, doesn't work out so well for you, you can always create a little almond shape, kind of like the shape of the bird's body, using two brackets that come together, and that also makes a really nice leafy shape as well. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of white and a little bit of yellow to my green color to make it a bit lighter and brighter. And I'm going to apply some more leaves. I also put a little bit of brown in there too. Um, but I'm just going to add another round of leaves with this lighter color, just so I have some variation in the shades of green that I'm applying to the leaves. And I'm not trying to keep them totally separate from the other ones. Sometimes they actually completely overlap some of the other green ones that I added. I thought it would be cute to add some little red berries to this branch, so I'm using my small detail sized brush and a little bit of red and I'm just creating small little dots all clustered together in small groups on my branch so that it looks like there's little berries on it. So I like to adjust now that my owl has had some time to dry and I really felt like I needed some more bright white areas on this owl. So after acrylic paint has dried, you can always go back in and paint on top of it and adjust things. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm just adding some more white to the areas on the face where I felt like it needed to be a bit brighter. I also felt that I couldn't tell the difference between the edge of the wing and the belly enough for my liking. So I'm using my small detail sized brush and a little bit of gray and I'm just doing some small dashes to semi outline the edge of the wing. I don't want to outline it too harshly or I don't want to do a full on outline because then it will just be maybe a little bit too noticeable. But I just did a little bit of dashes going along that edge of the wing there to make it um, kind of stand out a little bit more. Um, now I've just mixed up an even lighter green. I added some more white to the green that I had on my palette and using my small detail sized brush I'm just tracing around the edges of some of my leaves to make them look slightly more detailed. So it turns out that I needed another branch in there. So I'm using my small detail sized brush to add in another dark brown branch. So I'm just creating a line and then I'm going to add branches coming off of it, creating sort of these letter Y shapes. I didn't add any leaves to this one, but I did add some berries to it.
every eye needs a highlight. It makes it look alive and like it's wet. So just using a little bit of white on my detail size brush, I'm just going to put two small dots in the eye toward the right hand side of it. And I place these on the iris or the brown part of the eye that I painted, just a little dot dot, and then the eye looks so much more alive. And here's the very last part of the painting. I'm going to add some falling snow. I'm using a little bit of white and my detail size brush, and I'm just dotting around as randomly as I can. I usually dip my brush into the paint and try to get as many snowflakes out of that as possible and then add some more paint and repeat the process all over the background. I didn't want to add any snow falling over my owl too, too much. Because the owl is already white, I didn't want to mess anything up by adding more white on top of it. So I kept most of my snow to the background of the painting. So at this point, you've reached the end of your painting and I hope you enjoyed making it along with me. If you did, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel so you can see future videos that I'll put out. And thank you so much for joining me and for watching and I hope to see you again sometime.